In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use Flow to begin scripting inside of Stingray. All right, so we have our level all set up. We've got our collisions, and now what we want to do is we want to get our character in the game, and we want the character to begin moving around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab our hero character, and I'm going to drag him into the scene here. And what I want to do is I want to get him moving in the scene. So in the asset browser, let's double click on CatFu, and it'll bring up the unit editor. And when that comes up here, we're going to begin creating some nodes and hooking them together to create um, the movement that we want. So let's go to unit flow right down here at the bottom and you'll see that we have a graph that is very similar to level flow. It's important to know that unit flow and level flow are different. Okay, The unit flow is going to be contained on the unit that you have selected, whereas the level flow is going to be contained to the level itself and anything that is in that level. So with CatFu under unit flow we're going to right click and this will bring up our menu of the different nodes that we can begin placing inside of our graph. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to bring in the input. So I'm going to be using an Xbox 360 controller to help me out with showing you how to get this to move. We'll talk about getting the keyboard to work here in just a little while, um, but I want to just use this as testing. Now you could use an Xbox 360 controller that hooks up to the PC. Um, you could also use, um, I believe, an Xbox One controller if you have the proper drivers downloaded. So whatever you want to use, that's totally up to you. So let's go ahead and go to input and under input you'll see that we have different forms of input. I want to use the Xbox thumbstick. Now with the Xbox thumbstick you'll see that there are a couple of inputs available. I have controller ID and this is going to detect the first controller in the computer. So right now the ID is zero. Then we're going to tell it what thumbstick we want this to control. I'm going to left click and you'll see that I have a choice between left or right. I'm going to use the left thumbstick. Now you'll see that we have an axis value. So it's looking to um, send information in vector form. So you'll see this light green color. This means that it's going to have vector data output to something else. So with this I want to get the length in which I'm pressing that thumbstick. So if you press it all the way over, it's going to give you a value of 1.0. If I don't have any, or the left thumbstick pressed, it's going to give me a value of 0. So in between 0 and 1. So let's go ahead and right click, and we're going to go to Math, Vector, and Length. I want to get this here, and what length is going to do is it's going to output my vector data into a numeric value. Numeric value is basically just a number. And it's also denote, denoted by this blue color. So what I want to do now is I want to get the length and I want to move the character based on a value which is going to be speed. So with this length let's go ahead and right click and let's go to math numeric and I want to do multiplication. So I can hook these two values together because they match in color. And I want to multiply the length of my thumbstick. So if it's being pressed, I want to multiply the value by 0.15. Oop, let me try that one more time. Uh, let's do, yeah, 0.15. And so with that, let's go ahead and talk about how to get it to move the character. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to use vector times numeric. So I want to do math again and we're going to go to vector and I want to do times numeric. So I need to get the rotation of my object. So it needs to know what direction I want it to move forward. And so I have to get its current rotation or its forward vector. 
So let's right click and let's get the unit, meaning the character, let's get its unit local rotation. Make sure you're using the get, not the set. And then I'm going to convert this rotation to vector value because I need it right here. So let's go ahead and right click and let's go to uh, math vector and I want to get the vector from rotation. Okay, because I have a vector output, so I need to plug that into a, or excuse me, I have a rotation output, and I need to put that into a rotation input. So now I have this isolated view. I, have, I can get the right axis, I can get the up axis, and I can get the forward axis. So what we want to do here is we want to multiply the forward axis by that numeric value, which is going to be coming from this multiplication. Okay, so now let's physically move the mover that it's uh, connected to. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to physics and then we're going to go to mover, move mover. Let's take the value and plug that into delta position. And then you're also going to notice this input right here. This is, for this to execute, it needs to be executed from the out thumbstick. So whenever this is pressed, it needs to go to this node right here, and then this node is actually going to get everything that comes from here. And then it will physically move that. All right. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and set the unit's new position. So let's go ahead and right click and let's get the mover position. So we're going to go to physics, mover, get mover position. And then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to set the unit's local position. So set unit local position. I'm going to go from the out to the in so that way it's updating this immediately as it's moving we're going to get the position of our mover and then we're going to update that position and that's all we'll need for right now so let's go ahead and hit control s to save this then what we'll do is we'll go into stingray and we're going to test this out now whenever we try to test this out you're going to notice that the camera uh, the viewport camera is going to move whenever I press the thumbstick because we haven't set a camera up yet but we can do this for testing so whenever we hit play it's going to compile that data and it's going to begin to launch that test level so as you can see the test level has come up and let's press the left thumbstick you'll see the character begins to move but he's only moving in one direction so there's a little bit of a problem. We're not getting the rotation value. Now we're getting everything that we've put in there so far. Okay. But now what we need to do is we need to get the character to rotate with that left thumbstick as well. Okay. So we'll get started with that next.